You mentioned that the things about a policy on lectures, was there, was there any value component yes. in there? And if I heard right, is there going to be training for these lectures so they'll know how to be evaluated and how to set up their, their, their documentation? I think that's going to be up to the campus. I know in my department at KCC, we, we developed evaluation documents for, for every single level that just kind of outlined what you need to be able to do for um, moving through your lecture step placement, what documents you needed to have in, in order, uh, what the deadlines were, what the sections of the, I'm happy to share that with anyone who wants, I think I've got it somewhere on my desktop. Um, and, and also, you know, instructors, contract renewals, temporary, we, we had a sheet, just a basic sheet for every single category of hire that, um, let them know, and it's the chair's job to ensure that, you know, the faculty have this information. The, the one particular thing that I think I heard was they're going to be evaluated on the SLO part. Is that true? I got to look at that statement again. Um, you know, campuses are interpreting SLOs differently. Um, again, we, we, you know, we, we, we got a card block saying, no, we're, we're not being evaluated. And, and that Morton has reiterated that several times in conversation with us, that he is not interested in seeing faculty, you know, in, in a strictly quantitative way, deal with, you know, how many of their students pass at what grade level and, and, and those sort of quantitative measurements. What he wants is this sort of you know reflective process on how am I doing? How can I improve? Where are my students going? But um, I think that it gets you know it's like the circle you know you pass it on and then it gets it gets back somehow to we're all going to be assessed on quantitative measures. Morton's been pretty clear he's not in favor of that. Um, I don't know how, if, if it's administration that's, that's catching the, the wrong thing, or if it's just that I think, and it's one of the reasons that I was on the a, a naysayer from the get-go on SLOs, was I think it's a management approach that comes from the business world, and it's total quality control, and we will have measures, and if you can't measure, you can't management, and I don't believe that philosophically, um, and I, I felt like we were on getting on a train when we were asked to define SLO for our courses, but okay, we're not going to have to evaluate your courses, but then AACJC says, oh, you must. You know, it just, it just seemed from the get-go that we're stepping on a train we will not be able to control, and I was told by my colleagues, oh, no, Sharon, you're wrong. This is how we, we take control of it. I don't think so. And now it's 10 years later. I, and I did bring this up years ago. Who remembers at an OPA board meeting when, when one of our board members jumped down my throat from Manila going, learning outcomes are just absolutely wonderful. And they go, they are in the beginning when you sit down with your colleagues and you think about things and you, you know, maybe there's some value in that. I'm not going to deny it. But 10 years later when you're being asked to provide quantitative information um, and put them in little boxes, it becomes tedious and it's, you know, again, it has this sort of mission creep and being asked to do things we're not, we're not trained to do. I'm not a statistician. I'm not a statistician. I'm a philosopher. I can make up shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I can make stuff up or I can go, well, you know, I think. But I don't have any training in how to establish an intake form that gives me what I would call valid information. But that's what we're being asked to do. Bob, 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 I'd like to go back to the issue about, you know, say, slackers and the faculty. And it, it's a real problem. Uh, I think it's a minority problem, but it, but it is an issue. And, uh, best example I can think of, there was a professor in the chemistry department at UH Manoa that had Alzheimer's probably for 10 years before they got him out. And it was the students who finally forced him out because he was giving the same lecture over and over and over again. <laughs> but 
uh, they knew there was a problem 10 years before. I mean, uh, but, but the real issue on this is that you've got to go back to the contract and the issues of things like post-tenure review. And these can be worked out. But in my experience, a lot of times it's administrators who are too lazy to spell things out and work the details out with, with an organization like UFA. And, and it's something that I've observed with UFA. I mean, UFA goes by the contract. Uh, Jay and Musto, the contract is our Bible. And they are not going to defend the faculty member that is in violation of the contract. But if it's the administration that's in violation of the contract, they'll go to bat for them. Now, sometimes that is for the slackers, unfortunately. And it really is something that the administration needs to sit down and say, look, this is, this is a problem, let's change the contract. And I don't think we would be against that. Let me give you, give you one example. Uh, a lot of, or some, not a lot, some, some professors will avoid post-tenure review near the end of their career by saying, I'm going to retire in two years. Okay, and you don't have to go through post-tenure review. And then two years later, you know, they say, oh, I changed my mind, I'm not going to retire. Now, it, it's sort of a loophole. I mean, I understand that the purpose was, well, why subject somebody to this if they're, they're going to be gone in a short time? Well, when you recognize that it's being misused, let's sit down and figure out a system that will, will overcome that abuse. What I see is that administrators aren't willing to do that. They'll complain about it. They'll, they'll accuse faculty of misusing it, but they won't sit down and change it. And that's what ultimately needs to be done. And if, and, and I think UPA has been very reasonable on these things. It was willing to, you know, discuss them. But many times uh, I don't see the administrators sitting down and say, specifying these are <laughs> what the expectations are. Uh, another example of that is that they will, um, uh, well, I come, I was at the cancer center for 25 years as a researcher. And they, a lot of times uh, when I started, the amount of money you brought in wasn't an issue. Now, more and more, the attitude is that you have to bring in half your salary uh, in research grants. Well, that's fine, but change the criteria. There's virtually no uh, unit at Manoa that has gone in and said, this is a criteria of employment, that you bring in 50% of your employment. There's that expectation, but they don't want to go to the trouble to actually put it in the criteria. and so. This is something that uh, you know, uh, needs to be worked on. I think we can come up with solutions. And, and it was, has always been willing to negotiate these things. But let's have an open, frank discussion. And that's what I've seen missing from the administration on these issues.